Welcome to the class. In this class, we will extend our discussion of percentage increase and decrease with the help of these examples. In the previous class, we have discussed about the basic concept of multiplying factors. Just to remind you that, for a particular percentage increase and decrease, there is a corresponding multiplying factor. For instance, the multiplying factor for 10% increase is 1.1, that is, if we have to calculate 10% increase in any value, we have to multiply that value by 1.1 to get the final value. Similarly, in this table, these are the corresponding multiplying factor for, respective percentage increase and decrease. Now, let's solve this example, by applying the concept of multiplying factor and we will see how these multiplying factors were useful in solving such kind of questions. First of all, we will go through the question. It says, Length of a rectangle is increased by 20%, while its breadth is decreased by 20%. Calculates percentage increase or decrease in its area? To solve this kind of question, there are two types of method. Method 1 also known as unitary method. In this method, we assume the initial value of the length and the breadth as 1. Even though it is rectangle, we have assumed both the sides as 1. Now, we all know that an area of a rectangle is equal to length into breadth. So, if the length and the breadth is 1, obviously, the area of rectangle will be 1. As per question the length has been increased by 20%, that means, we will have to multiply initial value by 1.2, as 1.2 is the multiplying factor for 20% increase, to get the final value of length. So after increasing 20%, the length has now become as 1.2. Whereas, the breadth of a rectangle has been decreased by 20%, that means, we will have to multiply initial value by 0.8, as 0.8 is the multiplying factor for 20% decrease, to get the final value of breadth. So after decreasing 20% in breadth it has now become as 0.8. One must remember the corresponding multiplying factor for percentage increase and decrease. We have already discussed this in our previous class. So. After increase in the length, and, decrease in the breadth, the new area will be 1.2 into 0.8, which is equal to 0.96, as the new length is 1.2 and the new breadth is 0.8. Now, the difference between the initial area and the new area is, 1 minus 0.96 equals to 0.04. So from initial value 1, the area has now become 0.96. So, what is the percentage decrease in area? The percentage decrease in the area is the difference between 1 minus 0.96 divided by 1 as 1 is the initial value of area, multiplied by 100, that is, 0.04 into 100 that is equal to 4%. So the answer is 4% decrease in area. We can also get this answer directly, by using the concept of multiplying factor. That is, we know that for multiplying factor 0.9, the corresponding percentage decrease is 10%. Similarly for 0.96, the percentage decrease will be 4%. Now we will calculate the same question, with the help of another method, method 2. In this method, we assume the initial value of the length and the breadth as 10. So, if the length and the breadth is 10, then the area of rectangle will be 100. As we know, the area of rectangle is equals to length into breadth. Now, as per the question, there is 20% increase in the length. So we multiply the initial value by 1.2, as 1.2 is multiplying factor for 20% increase to get the final value of length that is, 12. And for 20% decrease in the breadth, the initial value will be multiplied by 0.8, as 0.8 is multiplying factor for 20% decrease, to get the new breadth as 8. 
so the new area will be 12 into 8 that is equal to 96 now we know the initial area was 100 and the new area is 96 so the difference between areas is 4 just by looking at this we can say that there is 4% decrease in area as the new area is 4 less than 100 as 100 was our initial area so in this class we have seen that by using either of the methods we can easily calculate the percentage increase and decrease in area we will discuss more examples of different kind in the next class till then keep on practicing